guessing I'm pronouncing your name right, right? That's right. Malik? Malik. Malik. Okay, Malik. Miss Terry Malik. You are a Reiki master and you receive your Bachelor's of Science degree in Psychology and a minor in Philosophy over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Long, long, long time ago. I'm still going to school. At that time, you became very interested in holistic healing and spiritual growth. You have been studying and applying healing through nutrition and alternative holistic healing throughout the past several years of your life, as well as following a very powerful path of healing through spirit. I mean, this is the next level of taking yourself to the next level of consciousness. Absolutely. And um, you have lived your progressive solaces, or you have lived with progressive solaces since you have you was a young child. After wearing a back brace for several years during your youth and even trying electronic shock therapy, wow, you're released from treatment when you were reached when you reached skeletal maturity at the age of 18 however when you turn 28 you realize the deformities were becoming more and more apparent what is deformity um the just not you know not looking normal so to speak okay. my body was twisting okay. because my spine was twisting so i had humps in my back and shoulders were crouched over and hips were crooked, that kind of thing. So I was starting to look like I was very handicapped. Okay. Okay, so after that, however, when you're starting to, you had began experiencing some complications with breathing as well as with various other organs. You had to undergo constructive surgery to stop the continued, continued progression of your solaces. Your two curves had increased from 35 degree curves to 17 degree curves in 10 years time. This only offers in 10% of adults after skeletal maturation. Miss Terry Malik, welcome to Dallas Real Networks. I wrote this down because this was too much information for me. I, yes. I had to acknowledge that because this is what anybody wants to know before we have this conversation with you. Sure. And. Uh, Thank <laughs> you for thank you for taking your time. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor. Miss Terry, I mean, let's go. Let's go back. Uh, let's go back to you know when you were a kid. Uh, as far as when we had conversations, we you know I realized that you had this power or whatever that is, you know your your uh, your <laughs> spiritual things that we you we had the other week. Yes. Uh, you had this when you were a young kid? Yes. Okay. I had, uh, not, not nearly as strong as now, but I had a lot of intuition. And I just had this, what I called it, just this knowing of things. And I would pick up on presence, the presence of things from, that other people didn't see. You okay. know, other dimensions or you know various things so anyway I always had this this whole other world that I lived in that no one else knew they didn't know that I lived there they didn't see it they didn't experience it so it was my own little world and uh, what, what if we can go deep inside okay. in your own little world <laughs> deep about? inside my own little world um, for example at a very young age I started seeing you know what people would call ghosts I would see these spirits that were not in this, you know, not visible to most people. In this not world. in this dimension. In this dimension, exactly. <coughs> so I didn't understand it at that time. I just knew I saw things that other people didn't see. And the way it was always put to me by adults is, oh my gosh, you have such an imagination. You have such a wild imagination. And they would just laugh it off like it was cute. Mm. And so I learned to accept that, okay, this is something called imagination and it only happens in my own head. <laughs> And so I, I, that's why I kept it quiet. I just started kind of living in a world where that was, you know, I, I lived in a world where for quite a while I had to determine what other people did and didn't see and didn't, didn't experience, and I had to learn. Um, I've actually written about this in a, a, quite a bit. It just hasn't been put out to the public yet, but I've been working on a book for a few years. But I started talking about, basically, I had to learn how to play different roles 
in different parts, almost like, you know, like an actor. So I had to play different parts throughout my life in order to navigate my life because I didn't always know uh, why certain things that I saw or felt weren't accepted. So, so you, to put it into simple words, you can see ghosts. Yes. <laughs> or maybe angels. I can see, at, at this point in my life, as a child I could only see what I would call physical human beings that had passed on. I could see animals too. I could see humans and animals. Really? So, so ghosts. <clears throat> but as I got more into what I do with the energy healing and all of that now, I can see things from so many different dimensions. I see angels, I see ascended masters, um, I, I, you know, guides, many different guides people have. Um, sometimes I see them, sometimes I just hear them or feel them, but I am able to experience their presence. Ascended masters, what is that? Ascended masters are, um, some examples of ascended masters would be um, Buddha, Lao Tzu, Jesus. Mm. Um, these are just a few. There's many, many, but there are these, these um, people who have walked on this world as humans who came to learn and understand different dimensions and understand the universal laws and understand they, they basically uh, some of the readings and teachings and stuff I've learned call it mastery mm. they've been able to master these different levels and in their lifetime in that incarnation or in that lifetime and that that evolved into um, you know over time they became masters and then when they passed on they ascended they actually do work with with some people and they communicate, they communicate with us. So. Okay, now you you have for eight years or more than eight years, how many years have you practiced Riti? Well, I've only been practicing this for about three and a half years. Three and a half years, mm -hmm. and before that, yeah. what were you doing? I did a lot of study, a lot of studies of different um, spiritual practices and religions. I studied you know, I, I grew up in a Christian environment, yeah. but I, when I went off to college, um, one of the very first classes I took was world religion, okay. and I was getting a degree, a minor in philosophy, so I studied world religion, and then that opened me up to start really researching and learning about all the different teachings throughout the world, so okay. I started studying all of that, and that's really kind of where my spiritual learning started. Um, you know, I, I, would, I would find... I would kind of get on a particular topic or subject and talking about these ascended masters, I would read all that I could read about them and learn a lot. Um, and basically, I would take pieces from the different things I learned yeah. that resonated with me, which is what I now call my truth. You know, what I felt became, made me up to who I am, you know, and made the truth that I am, made, allowed my truth to come out. So it wasn't just one set way of teaching. It's, it's evolved. It's many, many, many different philosophies and teachings that are out there that I have been able to meld into what I believe is my path. Now, the interesting part is last week when I came over here and I walked in, and then later on when we are, it was my first experience on spiritual healing. Is that what we did? Well, they call it energy healing. But me personally, yeah. my own journey, it's very much spiritual healing. Okay, so very energy much. healing. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this year, or it, it started like two years ago, we, we, there's this movement that started, that's the new age movement. Every young kid on the block is talking about spiritual growth, they're getting inside, you know, they're talking about energy and there's this book came out called The Secret where they only talk about what you think is what it becomes. But that is not the only sector of spiritual growth. There are like seven different pillars of, like seven different uh, laws, right? Uh, of spirituality. Is that, am I, am I right? Well, um, yes, yes. <laughs> But the reason I hesitate is there's so many different teachings out there. Some teach okay. that there are seven universal laws. Okay. Some teach there are 11, 12. So it, it depends, again, on who's 
interpreting that. Wounds are pretty good. But there are many, <coughs> many levels, yes. And, for example, seven is a very powerful number in this movement. I mean, just in the, in the cosmos, in the universe, seven is a really powerful number. Many things come in sevens. So that's um, okay. well, very much a part of that. Let's go a little bit into the background of what, 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 what is this movement that I'm a part of. I'm excited to be a part of this <laughs> movement, just, just, just sitting here, you know. Uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're like YouTube, YouTubers who are big in spirituality, getting healthy, mm -hmm. uh, questioning belief systems and personality that are shaped off uh, conditioning, social conditioning, no matter which culture you come from. And I never thought of spiritual healing before coming to you as something that I should, I need to do. But studying on all of this laws and everything, mm -hmm. why does it make so much sense? And where is this information, like, the root of this information coming from? Uh, the, 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 the spiritual, what is the spirit that needs the healing? Why does the spirit need the healing? And what is the spirit? Is it detached from the body in any way? If somebody's wondering, you know what it's I mean? A, it's a very good question. Um, well, I'm going to start by saying it's not so much that the spirit alone needs healing. I almost see it, I'm trying to think how to put it into words, I almost see it in reverse, not in reverse, it's not a good statement. Um, actually, if, if I can kind of, Turn it towards, okay. I would like to talk about the seven bodies. Okay. Because that's I think that's a good way yeah. to answer that, address that. Um, again, this is, you know, there's many theories out there, but there is, there are teachings and theories that there are seven, we have seven bodies, and we have four lower bodies, and three upper bodies. Okay. And again, um, anyone who knows me kind of knows, I never teach all this stuff for you to just take it at face value and adopt it as your own. Like I said, I studied many different things, and I've pulled in what works for me. So for me, it's just about teaching what I have learned or experienced or whatever. So, But this one really resonates with me very strongly. Um, I just taught my first class on seven bodies last week. I was very excited to teach it. Um, and it's taken me quite a bit of time to put this together through various studies and reading. But, of course, our four, our four lower bodies, the one we know about, obviously, is our physical body. But we have a mental body, an emotional body. So mental body, our mind, our emotional body, which um, is how our feelings and thoughts manifest. In our body, our emotions manifest physically as often as symptoms or imbalances or um, disharmony within our body. So if we have pain or discomfort or angst or anxiety, any of that, that is, those are things manifesting. That's our emotional body manifesting. Um, and then our fourth lower body is called our etheric body, and that is the body really believed to connect the physical, um, let me see if I say this, I'm about to jump ahead. The etheric body is the body that encompasses all experiences, you know, um, to put it in simple terms, it would be good experience and bad experiences, you know, it's all those energies and all the experiences we've had. Um, emotional scars, mental scars, all of that is considered the etheric body. The three upper bodies, we then have a body that we call, um, the, and I don't, uh, let's see, we have a body above, so many, you know, above our head, and that is called the higher self. It's also called the higher mental body. There's different things that it could be called. Um, some people call it the Christ self, it, which just means the anointed one. So there's that body, and then above that is called the I Am Presence. And then the seventh body, that's surrounded by the different, um, it's, it's the rings of, uh, a lot of people see it represented as chakras, the different colors. Um, it's, it's basically protected around that. But the I Am Presence is the highest presence that we have, the highest body that we have, and that is what connects us out to the divine, to the universe, to God, whatever people want to call that, and that's what connects us. So for me, in healing, it is not just about, I've got this physical body and I need to heal it. It's not just about the mental body, it's not just about the emotional body, it's about the, the whole seven body system. And I feel that the work that we do, um, the, 
the more work we do and the deeper we go, the more that it can expand out to the different bodies. You know, for, for years, all I focused on was my physical body. You know, okay, I've got to have surgery, and then I need to, okay, now I need to eat right, and now I need to exercise, but I never knew how to incorporate that with all this other, these other layers of energy bodies that I had. Okay. So, um, so when I talk about, for me, healing through spirit is being able to connect all of the lower bodies with my higher bodies and, and really finding alignment with that, finding balance and alignment so that, to put it in simple terms, my head and my heart are talking together. You know, they're not separate. I'm not, my, my head's not talking my heart out of, what, is, what are really my passion? What is it I really want to do? What is it that drives me? What, make, what fuels me? What feeds my soul type thing? My brain can easily talk me out of all that. I can start having self-doubt. I can start having these negative thoughts talk, that the secret talks about. Um, the power of your thoughts. They're, they're very, very powerful. Um, but it's us learning how to connect all of that. Allow it to connect and flow. So... Aligning all these bodies, how important is it for for a healthy life? And does people suffer if they don't know how to do it, or they have never? They probably don't look at the world the way you and I are trying to look at the world. Yeah. How does it does it matter, or is it can they be harmonious, or is it even possible to be harmonious without this? I, I can't imagine being harmonious without it. I yeah, really because, can't. Because you ha once yeah. you've ridden this path, yes. and, and you cannot go back. Um, yes. I want to ask you one thing. What, what kind of energy do you, are you, uh, can you feel now? Because last time when I came in, you were like, I can read your energy. Mm -hmm. I never s met anybody who can read somebody's energy. W what do you feel now? Well, I noticed an observation. Okay. So I will say it because you asked. I'm not, and, and I really mean when I say observation, it's not a judgment. I read energy, and so it's not it's not used to, to judge anybody. It's to just know where things are. That's just I can't help it. <laughs> it's just part of me. Um, I noticed that both. Let's see how do I say this? I noticed you you yawned a little bit, and I felt like like tired. Yeah. And even when I came in, before we started talking, I said, I'm just suddenly tired. Earlier, I was so hyper. I was bouncing off the walls, and then suddenly, I was just kind of tired. But it's because, you know, we've used so much energy in conversation in, in, a, in a phenomenal way. But, you know, we've used so much energy throughout our day or whatever, and then it just kind of becomes, we kind of work together to just come to a place where we're, Okay, we're just going to slow down and have a conversation. <laughs> you Is know? that what happens? So I felt like we just kind of shifted into that quieter, more still energy than where it was before. Yeah, because... If yeah, that makes sense. It made absolutely Not sense. Not that that's a bad thing at all. It's just Not it a was thing. a noticeable shift, and suddenly I just <coughs> felt like my heart rate slowed down, and I just started breathing slower and got calmer. And Does it have something to do with this room? <laughs> this is what happened last time when I walked in here. Yeah. This room is, um, a lot goes on in this room. Okay. A lot of healing, a lot of teaching. I do hands-on sessions all the time. And talking about spirit, you know, people's guides and people's, um, I mean, they come in and they get in alignment and they get, get into balance. So it's, it's a very good observation that you have because I can come in this room. And it doesn't matter where my energy is, I'm just going to go into a place of balance. Automatically. Pretty pretty fast. I mean, I can walk in here. I've been in a hurry or I'm stressed, and I mean, within five minutes, I'm just that way. And it's just because that's what happens in this room on a typical day. And so the energy here is very calm. It's very um, it's it's what I like to call in alignment. You know, it's just a very calm, balanced energy. So even when people walk in here before they have a session, and they're they're just in any kind of angst or they're tired or they're in a hurry, it doesn't matter. Um, they could be emotional, whatever. I feel like this is a safe place where people can just come into their balance and find peace and not, 
I feel like when you walk in this room, all illusion falls away. And it's real. That's just what came to me. It is real. This is where people bear their soul. It is real. And they, they just let all those layers just leave them at the door. That's how I feel. Well, this energy thing is really real. Mm-hmm. And it's fascinating to me that we people are starting to talk about this like they started talking about it, what, 2012? Yes. I, I mean, probably before, but that's when it became into my, my awareness. Like in mainstream, in, yes. in mainstream. I mean, yes. there were people like yourself and other people too. But all these years, if this was that important, that we are, and we are energy basically. Mm-hmm. Is that yes. the theory says? Yes. Would you break it down to so that people who doesn't have a clue what this is understands what is she, what is she saying? Okay. Um, well, energy. Um, if you've heard, you know, if you ever heard just the basic from uh, from Albert Einstein, energy is uh, it can't be created or destroyed, and it's all it's dynamic. It's always moving. It's always in motion. It's not it's not static. In other words, we're not the same all day every day. I mean, we just talked about our energy shift. You know, we're now we're a lot more calm and. You know, an hour ago we might have just been really hyper. You know, we it, it does create a shift, but but energy is dynamic, is what I'm getting at. It moves. But to kind of break it down, we have. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to talk with my hands. <laughs> it's an energy thing. I can't help it. Um, we have. Okay. Our bodies are made up of. We have cells in our bodies, and we are made up of cells in a physical form. The cells are made up of atoms. The atoms are made up of electrons. Mm-hmm. I did see you talk about this in one of your interviews. Yeah, because, because yes. you know, it's, it's fascinating. Uh-huh. That was in eighth grade. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. In, in my, it's just eighth grade science, right? Eighth grade science. And uh-huh. I, we never thought, like, that can be... It could be your entire existence is about this. Um, so I'm only going to talk to electrons. But electrons, um, just to break it down very simply... So the electrons are the very minute matter, the smallest form of matter that we are made up of. Those become atoms, atoms become cells. But electrons are the matter. Once electrons come into play with energy, then it has physical matter, which is what we have. So um, just to put something very simply, when electrons are moving in um, a clockwise direction, they're moving, it's, it's what they say, it's moving with light, with love, it's moving in that direction. Um, another, uh, another way, another language I like to use is the two basic emotions, like the most root emotions that we have are, uh, we have uh, love and we have fear. So if we were to look at kind of a scale of that love being up here in this high vibrational frequency and fear being way down here in this low vibrational frequency, there are many things that happen in between there that are either forms of fear or forms of love. So just to give an example, um, you know, despair is a really low frequency. I mean, when we're in despair and we think there's just no way out, there's Mm -hmm. nothing I can do, I just cannot get out of this place, um, that's a very low vibration. But then, after we do some work for a little while, and we kind of come up to a little bit higher place where maybe we feel hope, that's a much higher vibration than despair. It's still a fear-based energy, yeah. but it's much better than despair. And then after hope, we, you know, you just keep kind of coming up to um, a little bit higher, and then, and then of course you've got your mid-range, and then in love you have, uh, you know, joy and happiness and. Gratitude. Oh, gratitude. Gratitude is a huge one, which is very high, very, very high up on the scale. So this may sound weird, but if you take that scale, here's your love and here's your fear, and you flip it, you kind of turn it on its side. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a, These are your electrons that are going in clockwise motion. They're going forward, and they're creating and manifesting in a very high vibrational frequency. Whereas if they're going towards fear, they're going back counterclockwise. They're going backwards. And they're creating more density, it's heavy, it's a much heavier vibration, lower frequency, and a much, it's very dense. It's very, um, it's very heavy, and that's why when you're in one of those lower vibrations, you actually feel heavy. So talking about energy, when we're up and we're excited, and we're, oh, we're just, 
we just have so much these higher vibrational energies you know we have this joy and gratitude and compassion and excitement and just the spice for life you know all of that is is a very that is where I feel um, we as beings can be all the time if we choose to it doesn't mean there's not lower vibrational energies around it doesn't mean we don't have experiences of of any kind of fear-based emotion we do but we have the ability to turn that immediately and go back into that forward motion you know we have that choice i have to i have to interrupt you because i feel very like you know after you meditate for a while yes and you you know open your eyes and you feel this silence and everything is mm-hmm. you focus i feel like that all of a sudden right now okay is that what is that a good thing well i'll tell you a couple it is a very good thing um part of it's the room that we were talking about and yeah, even yeah, yeah. before i kind of got myself into balance into alignment but i'll also tell you another thing and again this is about a big part of what i do is awareness and expanding consciousness i tell you i'll tell you right now what's happening in the next room how do you know that <laughs> you, you see energy um i do know from my physical mind that there is a yoga class scheduled in there but what I do know is they are actually in a quiet meditative state right now I feel it I can feel it in my heart it's just okay so, this, so I feel their energy coming through into here this is the next one we're going to the next level now we, 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 we talked about this energy being real as mm-hmm. human beings and everything all these years I have no clue about this thing called energy and we are energy can build and mm-hmm. you know we can feed off of this weird thing because it's it is dangerous then if someone is carrying off negative energy it, it, it can't transfer onto you yes now it how does that happen like you sitting here without any contacts you can tell is that a feminine thing or um, if people are watching, I mean, what is this? It, well, it's a feminine energy. There's masculine energy and feminine energy, but it's not just females that have it. Everybody has masculine and feminine energy. But it's it's very much, um, it's intuition is a big part of it, which is, like I said, as a child I had, but when I was a child, I didn't always know about all the, I physically feel it in my body. I physically feel what is going on around me. Um... And I've learned how to read that. And I, and I can teach that, you know, in my classes. I can't teach it to the level maybe, I mean, I can't always teach what I experience exactly, but I can teach techniques and ways to kind of learn to do that. But I can feel the energy of the people around me. And I can actually feel it when they're not even in my presence. If I'm in tune with that person, if I tune into them. Um, and yes, that can be, that can be an amazing thing. That is why being in the presence and having the people in your life that feed who you are and where you're going and your passion and your desire, that's why that's so important. Because if you have these amazing visions and dreams and all of this, but all you're doing is being in the presence of all these people that just constantly pull you down and drain you, you don't have the energy and the momentum to do it, to do what you need to do to take action. So that just goes to show you why the energy you surround yourself with is so important. Um, and not everybody's aware of it. They don't, they're not always aware of what's coming in and what's not. Mm. But I'm actually very, very super sensitive to it. And, but again, it's practice. You know, I've done it for a, quite a while. Um, as an intuitive, I've done it my whole life, but as an energy worker, I've done it for about three and a half years. And I started realizing that's why when I feel that way, that's what's happening, you know. So if I kind of get that butterflies in the stomach, that sinking feeling, I know there's some energy around me that Is my that body does not want. My body, my all my bodies, my seven bodies say, we don't need that. We don't need that so in how, our presence. How do you get, get rid of that at that time? What do you do? Well, I personally use, um, I use Reiki. I use meditation. I use... Um, they're either called prayers or invocations. I, when I teach people, I use multiple words for each thing because everybody resonates with something different. Um, some people call them prayers. Some people call them setting an intention. 
an invocation for me. It's really tapping into those higher three bodies and tap, tapping into the cosmos and to source and to God, whatever you call it, and saying, okay, I need to get back in alignment. And But to go one step further is to create a shield around yourself, an energetic shield. And Reiki is one way you can do that. There's many other things you can do, but you can create this energy field around you that protects you. And not saying it's 100% all the time because we are, again, we're dynamic. So it will change. It'll change. And what if we're having a vulnerable day? What if we didn't get enough sleep? We didn't eat right. We, you know, we got some bad news. I mean, it could just be anything. It could drop our, we could drop closer to, you know, those fear based energies. Mm -hmm. And things are going to come in a little easier. And so then we just need to kind of work to get back into balance. Now, this energy that we're talking about, does this, if you're in a certain state, does that state attract more of that kind of state? Yes. Like that, is, that is probably... Absolutely. Uh, uh, yes, yes. And that, again, that, that's what the secret was teaching. Okay. Um, they didn't touch base on as many layers of it that I do when I teach it, but they do talk about the power of thought. But tied to your power of thought are your feelings, your emotions, and your beliefs. Okay. And, you know, they're not separate. Emotions, beliefs, and what were the... What feelings. The feelings. And okay, thoughts. so f feelings, emotions, and beliefs. Those For a normal person like me, it just sounds the same. What is the... Very good point. And it took me quite a bit of studying to be able to differentiate them. And I, sometimes I still kind of... Yeah, because people are like, like excited. The words don't come to me. Thoughts are neutral, okay? And that's one thing in, in a lot of times with the law of attraction when people teach it, they don't teach that part. Thoughts are very neutral. I can say this wall is blue, uh, the sky is blue, it is sunny, it is cloudy. Those are very neutral. There's nothing attached to that thought. But then you have a feeling about that thought. So let's just say, let's say I'm talking about outside. It's a beautiful day. Um, my feeling from that is I just, oh, you know, just peace. 